Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to part 11 of our multi-part series on detailing and building the Ravel Monogram 148 scale B17G. In part 11, we'll focus our attention on painting all of the small parts, doing some dry brushing, and then doing all the sub-assemblies, and finally, attaching all these parts to the inside of the fuselage. Part 11 is a little bit longer than normal, but I think you're going to like all of the things I've covered here and all of the techniques which can easily be reproduced. So, let's get started. I've got all of the parts painted and detailed and uh, they came out pretty good so we'll go ahead and start with the cockpit deck I have put tape across here where the bulkhead's going to go and here where a positioning pin is so this came out pretty good pretty raw right now oops I forgot to take off this piece of tape. There's a photo etch part that goes right there. Alright, I got it off. Looking pretty good. I did two of these. These are the the deck for the radio room <clears throat> and I have three kits and they're all warped. Now, the one on my left hand is not as warped as the one on the right. The one on the right is a later issue from a Revell uh, version, so I'll probably use this one. It's got much less of a warp, and once I glue the bulkheads in place, it'll help straighten this out. So, this came out pretty good too. The bulkheads this is the off bulkhead for the cockpit and <clears throat> I hand painted the wiring and the way I did that was with a IMAX fine detail brush I really like these IMAX brushes they're hard to find now but uh, if you can if you can get these small detail brushes buy them and the way I did that was with a quarter ounce bottle of testers paint testers is coming back slowly and their quarter ounce bottles are now readily available so I add a few drops of thinner to it so that the paint will flow better and uh, you can see it came out pretty good the red on the fire extinguisher was airbrushed I just very carefully uh, masked around it around this one and around this one but these black boxes the fire extinguisher cone here the wiring on this bulkhead and the fire extinguisher cone here were all done with this detail brush. And uh, the bulkheads for the cockpit, the sidewall bulkheads were also done with this detail brush. It came out pretty good. Now, if you get a little overflow beyond where you're trying to paint, the way I do my touch-up, now this zinc chromate cream was airbrushed, so the paint is fairly thin. So what you do is you dip the detail brush into the cap of the airbrush paint so that there's not too much paint on this brush, and you hold it just about a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch away where it is that you want to touch up, and you touch the, the brush onto the surface, and because the paint is thin, it'll flow out in both directions and butt up right against that edge. And that's how I do my touch-up work. And uh, it works really, really well. It takes patience and time and practice, but you can see the results. How I did that small silver button and that oblong silver piece there was with toothbrushes with a rounded end that I then sharpened to a tip and then I mixed the paint up really really well 
pull the top off, clean the top of the bottle, and the inside of the cap is where I get my paint from for the detail work that I do with these toothpicks. And here's another example. Let me get this really, really close so that you can see it. Back away just a little bit here. All those red buttons and silver buttons, all that was done, and the switches was all done with the tips of those toothpicks, and it came out pretty good. And of course the edges were dry brushed, and I'll talk about that in a second. The yellow oxygen tanks were all done, and this fire extinguisher was done by giving an airbrushed flat white first and then the yellow over it. And it really helps make the yellow, the flat yellow color stand out. And also, you don't have to do multiple coats. One coat will do it on both the yellow and the red. So that's a little secret to uh, use flat white first as a base coat after you prime it. Now, <clears throat> for dry brushing, I use this tiny flat brush. The bristles were actually longer and I cut them down and this brush is fairly stiff, but it's perfect for going around the edges with dry brush painting. So, and again, dry brush painting, you dip it into the cap and then you wipe it on a, I use these three by five cards until you get almost all of the paint off of here. And then you carefully dry brush just around the edges. And um, if you if you get too much paint on here, um, it's always good to start in an area that you're not really going to see, so that if you still have paint on here, that you can wipe some more off. So, uh, but I, th I really like this stiff brush. I've had it for years, and uh, I take care of my brushes. I've had, I still have Pactor brushes from 30 years ago, and uh, because I take care of them, uh, they'll last me. They'll last me my lifetime. So <clears throat> these parts were all dry brushed, and you don't need a lot of dry brushing. What you want is the additive effect of very subtle dry brushing, and and nice paint jobs to pick out the details on the inside. And the additive effect of that, plus all the details that you add, really adds both depth and accuracy and realism. Uh, to your model. The uh, pilot and co-pilot chairs, um, I airbrushed the olive drab cushions, which I lightened up a little bit with some flat white paint, and then uh, using that detail brush, I painted, hand painted, the uh, zinc chromate green color around it. It was much easier to do that than to try to mask around here. Now the there's going to be those photo etch pieces for the backrest as well as the base that are those yellow pieces that'll go on here. And, and I haven't laid out the photo etch pieces because th they didn't need to be painted. Just a few of them. Uh, this box is photo etch and this box is photo etch and uh, they needed to be painted. And I'll have to scrape a little bit of paint off of here to expose the white plastic in order to get um, be able to get a good attachment with testers glue. Uh, what else can I show you here? The brown uh, for the wood came out pretty good. It's just a standard brown color, and um, it's a gloss. So if you gloss, if you use this gloss wood color, all you have to do is uh, airbrush some testers dull coat over it, and it lightens it up. So looks pretty good. And the throttle quadrant, photo watch throttle quadrant, I painted the handles black with that detail brush and they came out pretty good. So <clears throat> once I get all the placards glued on and uh, start to assemble things, I'll get back with you and show you what that looks like. Now let's take a look at the inside of the fuselage and what I did inside the fuselage. Again, I used that detail brush to pick out some of the nice details that Monogram molded into the interior. 
there's going to be a lot of stuff glued onto this side and the other side on the interior. I didn't mess with the from here to here because you're not going to see it. Once it's closed up, you're not going to see any of that. And the bulkhead is right about here, so um, you're really not going to see much of that. Same thing here. The big area is going to be the navigator and bombardier sections up front. And you can see I highlighted some of the ribbing with silver paint. And um, again, just if you just take your time, and, and, and the secret to painting these small areas without getting paint to bleed all over the place is a little bit of thinner mixed in with those quarter ounce bottles. Just a few drops will do it. And it really helps make the paint flow better. So that concludes uh, all of the notes that I wanted to present to you on uh, all of the base colors that I've added to the interior. And so now it's time to start gluing on the placards and gluing things together. So uh, as I progress on that, I'll get back with you and show you how things are coming together. So now I've got all of the placards, the Edward placards, installed and uh, came out pretty good. This is a radio room bulkhead, the aft part of it, and the 50 caliber that goes through the top of the aircraft sits on this pedestal here. This is the aft bulkhead for the cockpit, and that's a placard, and there's two small placards here, and it came out pretty good. Starboard console for the cockpit with its placards. There's three of them. One, two, three. Came out pretty good. And here's the port side placard. Again, three. Or port side console, excuse me, with the placards on it. And three placards. And you'll be able to see this, but not very well through the cockpit glass. Here is the console, and it came out really nice. And here's the other side of it. This is one of the ammo boxes from the Verlinden set. And uh, some aircraft, there were several attached back here, but I didn't want to clutter it up too much. So I'll show you where I put the other two in a minute. But it came out good too. All the, everything came out good. One thing, when you install this kit plastic part, make sure that it is set all the way down to where the bottom half of this black part touches the bottom here. Let me turn this so you can see it better. This has to be all the way down touching, because if you don't do that, you're going to have a hard time getting this uh, instrument console in place. So uh, that's what I had to do and once I pushed it down a little bit it worked really really well. You're not going to see this once the cockpit is closed up but uh, I put them on there anyway. The pilot and co-pilot seats came out really good. There are Edward pre-painted seat belts, and uh, they really set off the cockpit area. This is the bombardier's chair. And here is 
cockpit area, navigator and bombardier, Once I get all everything glued in place, I'll show this to you again. But uh, so far, so good. And you're going to see through here really, really well. And through the canopy up here. So that's why it took so much time to detail these. And here are the other two ammo boxes right there. And I made levers for the bombardier station that's thin brass wire port 019 and the tips I put drops of white glue on here and the white glue creates a semi ball and uh, came out pretty good so let me see if I can get this close to you so you can see this better So the bombardier's chair will go in right here. And through the glass it'll look really, really good. Now let me go ahead and take that back out. set this aside and let me put this delicate piece inside my crib here's the uh, control for the forward dual 50 caliber machine gun you can't you're not going to see these controls unless I turn this into the stowed position which is what I'll probably do uh, the front was just black but uh, it came out good too And this is uh, overhead for the bombardier's position and the Norton bomb site. This is the Kitts Norton bomb site. I chose to use this one. So let me put these aside. And this is the radio compartment. I didn't put any seat belts on here because or soldier straps because you're really not going to see much through the uh, the top glass which comes down through here and once um, this bulkhead is glued in place it'll help straighten out that twist a little bit it'll turn it a little bit like that Right now, you've got a bit of a, more of a twist, but once that bulkhead's in place, it'll straighten that twist out just a little bit. So that's all the small parts. Now for the interior on the port side of the fuselage, here's what I did. These are the oxygen bottles that came from the Verlinden setup and um, they'll look pretty good. You're, again, you're not going to see very much once everything is closed up. You're just going to get a glimpse of these oxygen bottles. And uh, that's the 50 caliber box. So the interior came out pretty good. And here's the other side. really like the way this is going to look once it's closed up. So the cockpit deck bulkhead and flooring will go in here just like that.
and you're going to see some of this through these windows. So the next step is to go ahead and glue everything up and I'll show you that in a short video and then it'll be time to attach all the windows and I'll show you how I do that and then uh, we're going to button up the fuselage so it should be should have uh, everything buttoned up in the next few days and uh, then we'll start on the seam work around the fuselage so uh, I hope you like how this came out I sure did and uh, I was very diligent on making sure that nothing interfered with anything else so I took a lot of time to form fit everything into place on both sides of the fuselage and um, all these placards are going to look really really nice and the theme of this as I mentioned in my first intro video is this is what you can do with an older kit and uh, I really like the monogram kit because it has it has a surface which is fairly accurate in terms of the lap joining on the aircraft and it's got a minimum of seam work so let me go ahead and get all this stuff glued up and I'll get back with you I've got all the small detail parts glued in place and uh, I don't have the cockpit glued it's just kind of slid in and it slides into place so let me go ahead and pull this out <clears throat> and show you the cockpit area that edge right there interfered with this piece right here let me move this a little bit here with this edge right here so what I did was I shifted this back a little bit this way and here's the pin that it's supposed to sit on so I shifted it back about a quarter of an inch and um, so now everything fits so all the placards are in place and the cockpit navigator and bombardier sections all came out pretty good my hands are shaking a little bit I apologize for that I just got done weightlifting so yeah it looks pretty good the radio operators compartment also came out pretty good unfortunately the the twist in this part creates a problem for you this piece needs to be centered and it's not it's shifted this way so to help fix that I super glued this stock piece of uh, rectangular shaped brass down here <clears throat> and that helps straighten this out so that this sits more centered and you can also shift it just a little bit and let me show you what I'm talking about here I can go ahead and put this in place Whoop. let me see here okay nope it's not sitting right this oh here's the problem okay now now it's sitting good so if you glue it up just like that here's the problem you have right here so what you need to do as the glue is setting you push it this way a little bit and then that centers it so that's what you're going to have to do but uh, it'll look pretty good when it's done and the 
cockpit. I'll go ahead and close up the fuselage and show you how that looks. The lighting's not real good here at my desk for the, the camera. So, you know, I just have to bear with me. There we go. So, there's the how it's going to look when it's closed up. And you're going to be able to, <clears throat> with this, once the glass is in place, you're going to be able to see through the top and you'll be able to see the oxygen bottles and the panels in the back, the throttle levers, everything. And the same thing down here, the lighting is not real good, so you really can't, you're not going to be able to see too much here. But uh, once I get some still photography on here, you'll be able to see it better. But uh, everything's looking pretty good. Everything fits nice and tight now. Took a little bit of tweaking. So the last step now is to glue the windows in place. And I'll show you how that looks when it's done. And then uh, it's time to button up the fuselage. So I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. I've got the interior clear parts all glued up. And this is one of the drawbacks on the monogram kits. I mean, if you look close, you can see the positioning tabs. They didn't do a very good job of uh, designing this kit. So, <clears throat> but um, overall, uh, it came out pretty good. These parts over here, which is a dual, they were kind of hard to, you got to kind of push down on them to get them to sit correctly. And on this side, what I did was to get a better fit, I split this piece right here and that helped seat them better. I didn't have to do it on the other side, but I had to do it on this side. So I just need to clean it up a little bit more with some Windex on the outside and uh, we're good to go. So, and these, bot, these top pieces went in really, really well. I set them in place and I used my 0 .018 inch stiff metal wire to add tiny, tiny drops of super glue along the edges. And that worked out really well. So now everything is very secure and uh, looks good. Got a little bit of cleaning to do on this one. I'm going to take a Q-tip, see if that's on the outside or the inside. It's on the inside. No. Let's see if that cleaned it up. Yep, I got it. So that's the starboard side, and here's the port side. I didn't have to split this glass here. So, like I said, I set them and put tiny drops of super glue here. And if you do that and you're careful, it won't frost the glass. And again, this upper piece right here, those tiny tabs that I put in place right there worked really, really well. Nice tight fit. So now we are ready to glue in the, the two interior pieces and then close up the fuselage. We are ready to go. So, so far so good. After I get them glued in place, before I close up the fuselage, I'll show you what that looks like. The two interior platforms, the radio room and the cockpit area, as well as bombardier navigation area have been glued into place and uh, this forward one was an easy fit it slid right into place and it's a good fit and um, the aft one as I told you I had to adjust this so what I did was I used some testers glue on hard to see it 
this pin here and this pin here, slid it into place, closed up the fuselage, taped it shut, and then adjusted the interior piece so that uh, this this um, platform for the 50 caliber machine gun for the radio room was centered uh, right along the seam line here. And then uh, once it <clears throat> was dried, I took the other side of the fuselage off and I applied some super glue to, really can't see it very well because of the lighting. There's a pin here and then this pin here. And then once that was done and, and it was uh, dried, the end result is that this bulkhead and this bulkhead sit away uh, about 20 thousandths from the side of the fuselage. So to make it stronger, I put wedges here and here, and on the back side, I put a wedge here. And uh, there it is right there. And then super glue those in place. So now, this piece is nice and strong. So it all came out pretty good. Took a lot of planning and a lot of patience, but uh, it looks pretty good. So before I close up the fuselage for gluing, I will take a Q-tip and dampen it and clean the inside of these windows one more time on both sides of the fuselage before I close it up. And that should uh, take care of any dust and any marring that may be on the inside, but uh, the windows came out pretty good. Not bad for a 40-year-old kit. I'm especially pleased with the way these top pieces came out. Those wedges I put in place worked out really, really well. So <clears throat> the other thing is you gotta kind of set it on a platform because the this piece right here will snap and crack on you if you just let it sit on it. So um, I have this little wedge that I made. So um, now it's on to glue it up. I'm gonna go ahead and tape everything closed as tight as I can and uh, then I'm gonna walk down the fuselage seam here making adjustments to the uh, the size to get everything nice and tight and lined up and then I'll put drops of super glue along the seam line and the super glue uh, will work its capillary magic and get down inside the seam and provide a nice strong bond and it will be a filler. So uh, I'll show you how I do that in uh, our next set of videos. This concludes part 11 and stay tuned for part 12 where we button up the fuselage and do all the seam work. And as a reminder, don't forget this Friday evening starts the first two episodes of the Masters of the Air. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!